What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today, I'm gonna show you the best exercise for building throwing velocity. Before we dive in, I need you to understand that strength exercises are basically pointless if there is no principle, there's no plan, there's no program, there's no progressive overload behind them. If you're looking for specific adaptations, you need a specific plan and approach to these exercises. So first, with this golden exercise I'm about to show you, we need to build relative strength, Relative strength is your strength, how much weight you can lift relative to your body weight. And then after that, we need to transfer that over to high contraction velocities, which is gonna be your speed and power work. So not only is the weight on the bar incredibly important, we need to be focused and we need to lock in on how fast we're moving that weight. And that's where the Gym Aware RS unit and Flex come into play. These units by Gym Aware take the guessing work out of everything. So with the Gym Aware RS, with the Flex, if the primary goal is to build maximum strength, training with relatively heavy loads at slower bar speed is typical. So in velocity-based training, this might involve lifting at velocities close to or slightly below 0.5 meters per second. The focus here is on that maximal force production. So if we're looking for speed focus adaptations, you know, athletes like baseball or softball players who need rapid force production, training at high bar speeds is absolutely essential. And this usually involves using lighter loads and lifting at velocities above that 0.8 meters per second. The emphasis is on moving the bar as quickly as possible to enhance that explosive power. And then talking power, power is a product of force and velocity. So power focused training aims to optimize both of these factors. So training for power may involve lifting at velocities between 0.5 meters per second and 0.8 meters per second. And I've learned from experience, the closer we get to 0.8 meters per second, the more likelihood we're getting that power to transfer over to the field. And the plan essentially behind everything that we do, we refer to our famous pyramid. We first have to build our relative strength. After we've built that relative strength, we have to teach that strength to happen at high contraction velocities, which is your power. After your power, you have to do quote unquote, sport specific training in order to bridge that exercise to sport. And then at the top, skill trumps all. Doesn't matter how strong, doesn't matter how explosive we're getting. If we can barely swing a bat, we can barely throw a ball, it doesn't make any sense. So this is the pyramid that you have to build upon. How we build relative strength through our main exercises, right? is what we call triphasic training. This is what I've had success doing. I've tried a lot of other strength building methods such as the conjugate system. For baseball, softball players, rotational power athletes, I've found triphasic to be the best. So what triphasic training would be is pick an exercise, right? We'll go over the golden exercise after this, but pick any weight room exercise that you wanna get stronger at. First, we're gonna go two to three weeks of eccentric training. So that could be lowering slow five seconds, lowering slow three seconds on each rep, whatever it may be. After that two to three weeks, we'll go on to isometric training. That can be your yielding isometrics, that can be your overcoming isometrics. You're just continuously varying that. After your isometric phase, that's really gonna target where your tendon connects to that tendon of muscle junction make that strong, we're gonna go two to three weeks of just regular weightlifting, regular concentric, trying to lift heavy. So at that exercise, you should be the strongest you've ever been after that three week concentric if you laid that foundation of eccentric and iso first. But then what do we do after that, right? We're strong. We just build our relative strength in that movement. Now, right, we have to teach that power. We have to teach that strength, teach that force to happen at high contraction velocities. So how do we do that? We do that with velocity-based training. 
So whenever I get a high-level college player, a high-level pro guy, before they head off to their season, I always peek them out with velocity-based training. And that golden number is gonna be right around at 0.8 meters per second moving that bar. So the golden exercise is your reverse lunge. And high velocity throwers, I've noticed a strong correlation if they can build relative strength to about 1.75 to two times body weight in the reverse lunge, that's gonna give us the 90 mile an hour body. Okay, then after that, right, you have to start moving that weight fast. So I'm gonna show you the complete progression. So we have the reverse lunge set up. We have a safety bar set up. Bly is with us, Thomas Bly, Louisville commit. So say Bly's 200 pounds, I'd like to see him get up to about 350 pounds relative strength on each leg. So if you think back to the whiteboard, what we do first is eccentric training. So I have the Gym Aware RS unit hooked up. You can also do this with their flex unit to measure that eccentric time. Cause a lot of times, right, it'll be programmed, hey, you're hitting five sets of five each leg, but you're going down five seconds on each leg. A lot of guys don't actually truly go down five seconds. So it's nice having this velocity base reader by Gym Aware to get that sure five seconds on the way down. So it's gonna pop up right there. How I like to set this up is a little bit different than you've probably seen before. I let all our guys use pins because there's something called the force stability paradox, which means you can't produce maximal force from an unstable surface. So adding these pins, if they're not putting all their weight on it, makes their foot a little bit more stable. It makes it a little bit easier to do. So from here, we have the safety bar. You're gonna go ahead and grab a band and you're gonna throw it behind your back. He's gonna put one side of the band on one handle. Then he's gonna go ahead and dip under it. And he's gonna run this band by his lats and hook it to the other side. Now from here, he can go ahead and lift up. If you notice, he can let go of the bar and this band's gonna always keep it on that shelf. A lot of the times if guys were to hold without holding the safety bar itself, it could flip back and cause some you know, catastrophic ankle injury. I've seen it happen before. So from here, it's just gonna keep that bar nice and tight to him. So he's gonna grab the handles. We're gonna go eccentric reverse lunge five seconds. So he's gonna kick back with one leg, five, four, three, two, up. Nice. As you can see, he's right at 4.8 seconds. Go ahead, five, four, three, two, up. Good, go ahead and hit one more. Five, four, three, two, up. Good, go ahead, rack it. So after the eccentric phase on this exercise, we're going into the isometric phase where we're gonna be holding it at the bottom of the rep for five seconds. So we have the safety bar set up. Bob's gonna go ahead, reach back and kiss the ground with his knee. Now he's gonna hover up above the ground for five, four, three, two, and he's gonna explode up. Good, hit one more. Hover, five. Four, three, two, explode up. Gonna go ahead and rack it now. That's gonna really target two main things here. That's gonna target where the tendon connects to the muscle, so that tendon muscle junction, make that sturdy, make that bulletproof to prevent injuries, and it's gonna teach him how to produce force from a static position. So after two to three weeks of eccentrics, we go on to that ISO. After two to three weeks of the ISO, we hit our concentric, which is our regular reps. So this is the time to push the weight to be a hero. Like I said, if Bly's 200 pounds, we wanna hit 1.75 times body weight. So we should be able to load this sucker up to 350 pounds and start ripping reps at 0.5 to 0.8 meters per second. So here's the regular concentric. Like I said before, if we're looking for that maximal strength adaptation, load this sucker heavy and try to go 0.5 meters per second to 0.8 meters per second. Your Gym Aware RS unit's gonna show that and your flex. Go ahead. Come on, good. So Bly right now, for demonstration purposes, we have lightweight on here, he's hitting one sixes. So that just shows you, hey, we need to go a lot heavier to get the specific adaptation we're looking for here. 
So this is why velocity-based training, keeping track is so important. We're basically wasting our time right here with this much weight if we're looking for a strength adaptation. So we've laid the foundation of relative strength. We went two to three weeks of eccentric. We went two to three weeks of isometric. We went two to three weeks of concentric. Now that cherry on top to bridge that gap from the weight room to the field to peak these guys out, we're going straight high velocity training with the Gym Aware RS unit or the Flex unit. What we want here is relatively light weight on the bar and we want that rep velocity right around 0.8 to 1 meters per second. My golden rule is if it's over 1 meters per second, we're throwing more weight on it. If it's under 0.8 meters per second, we're taking weight off. That's the window we're looking for. If we're hitting that window, I know we're golden. Go ahead, come back, explode up. Nice. Again, super light weight for the man Bly here. We're just doing it for demonstration purposes. He's hitting one four O's. We're basically wasting our time here. Hey, that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, that reverse lunge, you guys need to get strong and explosive in that exercise if you're looking to throw hard. That's one of the main factors why we're getting what we're doing on the weight room to transfer over on that mound for guys in here. And you gotta make sure you're keeping track at bar velocity. That's how you take the guessing game out of it. A lot of coaches out there are saying, hey, you can't teach throwing velocity, you can't teach power. That's all bull crap. I've seen firsthand how keeping track of bar velocity is that cheat code to get that bridge to sport. And I stand by Gym Aware. We have the Gym Aware RS unit. This is gonna be the one that you see at those big time universities and big time programs. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's extremely durable and worth it. They also have this flex unit that does the exact same thing as this, but it's a little bit more consumer friendly. You can throw it in your bag, take it to the gym. The guys on our online programs, I always recommend this just to make sure we're building those specific adaptations we're looking for. And for a discount on the Flex, go ahead, check the link in the description, visit their website and use code method. And always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week. So do me a favor and subscribe for me. I appreciate you. We'll catch you next week. Game Rewards the Grind. It knows how much you've invested.